people and welcome to Startup Hack. Today we are going to talk about stop using try catch in JavaScript. So let's jump right in. Make sure to check out the link down below because we always provide the code samples that you can pull down and follow along so you can see in our project. Alright, as coders our job is to write a code that works. It's fine, but it's not enough. As good coders, our job is to write a code that works maintainable and scalable. What about error or exception handling? A lot of programming languages use try cache to deal with exceptions. We can also use this way, but it's not really a clean way. Let's see why. Using try cache. Let's assume we have an API that provides the ability to add a user to our database. So here's an example. We have a controller that reads the HTTP request, validate the user DTO parse, the DTO2 entity, add it to the database and finally return the HTTP response. Right now we have two annoying points. Call functions return errors, error specifications. Call functions return errors. Let's say we want to know all errors that can be returned by validate user DTO from DTO to entity and save methods to create multiple HTTP response for each. The only way to know that is to read the code of those methods. Here it is our code but sometimes it would be an external code such as a library. Even if it is our code it is a little annoying to do that. Error specification. Let's say we want to return a specific error for each step. If something goes wrong the first idea that comes to mind is to create a multiple try catch or better a nested try catch. I'll say none of them is good. Why? Multiple or nested try catch make code harder to understand and potentially unstable. Do you want to earn a hundred thousand dollars a year? Do you want to become a software developer within just three months? With our amazing course and awesome tutors, you never have to worry about getting stuck. We help students to learn skills that companies want to hire. We are Startup Hack. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. So let's get started. Okay, now let's try to handle errors by returning them. So here's an example. The code here parses an unknown value to a number. If the value can be parsed to a number, the function returns the number. Otherwise, it returns the error. The validate age DTO function use the parse to number function to validate the age DTO. It's good, but the parse to number function can return two types, the value or the error. It would be better if it always return the same type. Let's improve the way that the function returns an error. Result type. To reach our goal, we can create the result generic type that accepts both success type and failure type. So here's an example. We also create the success and failure util functions that create a success type and and the failure type. Let's rewrite our partial number and validate HDTO functions with the result type. So here's an example. Now the code is cleaner. Let's come back to the user creation code and handle errors by return them with the result type. So here's an example. As you can see here. In this code, we check the result in each step. If the result is a failure, we return the adequate HTTP response. Otherwise, we continue the process. We leave the global try catch to be sure that if we have not managed some errors, it return an HTTP 500 code. So you can see that. So thank you for watching this video. Handling error with return them as a function return using the result type allow us to be more granular and more explicit. So don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for latest updates. To joining our course, you can simply go to our website called startuphack.com. Thank you.